Just bounce to this. What's up everyone, my name is Brandon Clements and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be talking about Octane Render inside of Cinema 4D in a network environment. So we're going to be using multiple GPUs to render an image and it's pretty awesome. It's really easy to set up but I had some questions um, these past couple weeks on how to set up the whole network environment and we've been really busy lately with a big project that just came through and also I was at SIGGRAPH this past week which was awesome to see everyone and talk to everyone so I've been really busy it's been hard to answer emails so hopefully we can get back into the groove of things and start talking about Octane and Moto and Cinema 4D and some of these other things that we use to actually finish our projects with alright so without further ado let's go ahead and look at what we need to have on our master workstation and uh, one thing we need to open the render settings and make sure that we're using Octane and under the Octane uh, menu right here we need to go to network rendering make sure this is checked and then we get to hit network preferences now the only thing we need to have running on our master installed is the Octane standalone and the Cinema 4D plugin and those versions need to match if you see when I click on this network preference button uh, the two computers that are popping up, uh, one is saying unknown because of the invalid version, and then I have uh, another computer that's in another room. It's called Red 5, um, which is available to go. It's, it's ready and it's running the right version. And I actually have three other machines you can see here on my network. I have uh, Red 5, Rogue Leader, and Wedge, which is all um, Star Wars uh, references. <laughs> so what you need to do is you need to have all those computers ready to go with your network they need to be able to file share they need to be able to see each other it just makes things a lot easier in terms of troubleshooting if you have any firewall things that you're running into with the software so make sure those are hooked up and are ready to go and then what I like to do is actually remote desktop into those guys so I'll go ahead and remote into Rogue Leader and we're connecting and going and you can see here that I'm running the latest version of Octane standalone um, which is at the time being 2.24 and I need to actually have 2.23 running right now because we don't have a plug-in ready for 2.24 for uh, Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run through the installer with you guys you can see this daemon is the wrong version it's 2.24 that's running so we'll go through how to run these daemons so I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna say uh, I'm not one to install this guy or we'll say yes and we'll go through our setup wizard and we'll install to that right directory and it only takes a few seconds to install and then we can go ahead and get into our otoy folder and the first thing you want to do is double click you want to install the daemon and um, so far I've had no issues just going through and saying yes to everything just by hitting enter and just having everything by default alright so finished installation press any key to continue and then every time you want to make sure that your underscore run underscore install daemon this guy right here this batch file is running okay and you'll see it load up it'll be ready to go so we'll go ahead and exit out of this and we'll wait for this to appear okay cool so now we have red 5 and rogue leader and you can see now that the status is available and not invalid version because I still have on this machine if I go to my live viewer I still have 2.23 on cinema 40 there currently is not 2.24 which I'm sure is gonna come out in the next couple days maybe week or so so um, until then we have to use 2.23 the latest version all right, and now let's get our other machine up and going. So I'll go into my remote desktop. I'll go into Wedge, Wedge Antilius, and we'll make sure that we have that same installer. So I'll go ahead and do the exact same steps, okay? And then we'll catch back up in Cinema 4D. All right, so we should start to see Wedge. Okay, so now we have all of our guys ready to go. We'll say enable all and you can see that they instantly turn to running so they're performing right now the GPUs have been kicked up and they're ready to go so now let's just start um, creating a simple scene so um, we'll just do something super super simple just to make sure that everything's running we'll create a, cu a cube alright very exciting stuff I know 
two octane materials. We'll have one on the floor, one on the cube. We'll make the cube a blue color. And then we'll create a light. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my octane. Oh, I don't have it on this version. Um, basically what I'm going to do is open my settings and my live viewer. And I like to dock these in a specific kind of way. It's kind of fun to have these ready to go just like so and we'll change it to path tracing we'll kinda do the norm 2048 and we'll just say for for um, just to get everything kind of put into place 0 0.2 0 0.8 and 0.479 or so um, now these are just numbers that I've used in the past uh, so there are no, no specific real numbers here we're just kind of getting things working and then we'll go to objects and we'll create an octane light okay and make sure we can see the light in the viewport and we'll just point it yeah awesome we should be able to fire that up and if you notice let's see we have uh, down here, we, it says net render slaves 9 of 9 and 3 slaves, and we are just running uh, lightning fast in terms of, well, this scene is super simple. But um, trust me, when you get into very heavy scenes, as I have been in the past week, past couple weeks, um, it has been awesome. It's been really good to be able to just set it up super easy and go in and just get some great renders straight out of the box. Now, there's going to be some setup for you with the Octane Live username. Now, that's all that stuff can be found on your profile under otoy.com, but since that stuff is kind of confidential, I don't want to show it, but if you guys have any questions, leave um, those questions down in the comment section below, and I'm going to have fun here just uh, doing some test renders. So this is great for stills, um, but you're probably wondering how good is it for animation and uh, it's pretty awesome so let's go ahead and just set up a quick animation and we'll, I'll show you how to go ahead and, and render everything out so we'll put the cube over here we'll go to coordinates okay awesome we'll go up 40 frames or so and move it and then we'll have another key there and we'll set our frame range so we know that it's moving back and forth. And then once that animation is set up, what we need to add to our moving object is a Octane object tag. Okay, So this tag is going to tell Octane when it's sending the data to check every frame for the position of the cube since it's going to be moving. That's very important that we need to have that set up. And we'll go ahead and we'll set a save directory. Um, we'll go ahead and just say let's go to the data or the other drive here and we'll just say test or whatever for our purposes here and um, we'll add an alpha channel sure why not and in the octane settings we'll make sure everything's running good which it is output we'll say all frames everything's looking fine here you of course set your um, width and height. We'll go to add to render queue here and uh, I just named the uh, the test file just whatever and we have the output path for the frames and our log and then all we do is just say start rendering and the reason I'm using this method is because I've seen some stuff happen with the picture viewer incompatibility in terms of just it will render a couple hundred frames and then it will just kind of lock up and freeze and I've had most su most success with using the render queue and you can see um, this is a pretty efficient way of stacking your jobs and just sending it off and I know now that I'm taking all the Cinema 4D utilities out of the equation and we're pretty much just sending everything to Octane so um, yeah it's taking four seconds or so to render and if we go to our settings, we can make sure that everything is running 
Um, so there, it says unavailable right now because it's actually being used. So that's a good thing. Um, so we're getting like four second render times. Um, but I'll let this render and then we can check everything out in a second. All right, so I just want to go ahead and open After Effects, and this is what we have in our project. So it'd be good to go ahead and set up a folder that had um, the actual pictures rendering out to. So I'll just create a new folder real quick, just so we can throw all these into that folder, and then we can drag it into After Effects. And then once it's in After Effects, we're going to go to Interpret Footage Main, and we're going to make sure that this is set to 24, and then we can drag it down into our composition. Cool. So it only took, you know, a couple of minutes to get this out. And of course, it's super, super simple. It's just a cube moving from right to left. But hopefully I've explained the principles of what we need to actually get some of this stuff going. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please leave them down below. Any specific questions about setting up network rendering or maybe anything that's, that you guys have come across that's been kind of funky. Um, it looks like when Octane 3 comes out, there's going to be a lot of really awesome tools for us to use for the network rendering. We won't have to be using batch files. So um, that will be exciting to see what's going on with Octane 3. But for right now, um, I'm using version 2.23 inside of Cinema 4D, the latest version for Windows. And then, of course, we're using 2.23 standalone. So we got to make sure those versions match. And once you get everything up and running, you should be getting super awesome fast render times because it's been great for us because we've been rendering at super large resolutions. So let me know if this was helpful. Leave a like, and uh, we'll be talking to you guys soon. So thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next video.